Hey guys, today is July 31st, 2018, and uh, we're going to have a, a cool day today, so we're going to go ahead and uh, put our radiant barrier on the existing purlins, go in that direction, and then once that's done, we're going to actually do new purlins going east-west, um, in the opposite direction, and then we're going to install the metal roofing and stuff on top of that second layer that way we've got a air gap between below and above the radiant barrier which makes it more effective so anyway that's the goal here for uh, the first part of the day we'll see how much we can get done and uh, hope you enjoy okay so you're taking a look at the roof right now and uh, you're seeing the um, synthetic uh, underlayment that is on the roof right now and then the uh, purlins that were done from the uh, north to the south okay so the goal is um, uh, when you're putting on the <clears throat> metal roofing the uh, purlins actually need to go east west so basically from the closest part of the roof you're seeing here to the farthest end over there that's the direction that they need to travel so to be able to do the radiant barrier, you actually have to do the purlins vertically, and that's a good way to do it because um, as heat uh, gets generated from the sun, um, this uh, vertical channel, which is uh, rising, rising up like this, will actually, um, uh, through natural convection, allow heat to move up the channel and cool that area, uh, which will make the barrier more effective. So uh, what I did here is... Uh, as you can see, basically staple a couple spots on one end. Um, just make sure we're not going too far over the edges. Tack it down so that the wind doesn't rip it off. And um, I probably went a little bit over killing the staples there. I actually have to do a little bit less on the next round. Um, and uh, this rating barrier that we ended up <coughs> getting, um, it was from a company called U.S. Energy. And we picked it up off of Amazon.com back on June 17th. And uh, came in right away. It was on Amazon Prime. It was 129 bucks, 88 cents. It was shipped here, pretty heavy. Two large rolls. I mean, it's hard to actually carry both the rolls and uh, grab them because it's just kind of bulky and awkward. But uh, it's basically a um, dual-sided uh, radiant barrier, and uh, dual-sided radiant barrier with a mylar uh, weave that's actually built into it. So you cannot rip it with your hands. You can only uh, you can only what do you call it, uh, uh, cut it with a little knife or blade or something. So anyway, I had to go downstairs there and go get the second roll. These, um, this uh, Super R Plus Radiant Barrier um, was a thousand square feet. Uh, well, it's supposed to be four times 250. Um, at least that's what it says here, but I think I ended up getting, well, let's see, what's that, 50, 100, I guess I got 250, you know, 250 feet uh, of this, because um, that roof is 50 feet long, I got, what, two and a half strips out of it, so that's about 125 feet, so yeah, 250 is what I, what I ended up getting there, so I had a little bit of uh, barrier left over. Um, I uh, needed Kelly. She actually ran off to go uh, get some stuff in the car, for, grab some 2x4s, because at the bottom end where the eaves are, um, we're going to be putting a 2x4 at the base there so that the metal, uh, because if the purlins are actually half an inch tall, the uh, radiant barrier is, uh, you, know, you know, aluminum thin. It's a little bit thicker than the regular aluminum. And then uh, the next round of purlins is going to be another half inch on top of that. Plus, then you've got the, uh, what, 7 sixteenths decking, so about half an inch there. So you've got an inch and a half um, above when the metal is going to be attached um, on the eaves there. There's going to be a space gap of, uh, or a gap of about an inch and a half. So we're going to do a 2 by 4 um, across the base of the eaves over there. And uh, oh, look at those little turkeys down there running around. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and move to the next spot. Let's get the rest of the purlins started on here. Okay, so these were 16 foot uh, purlins. They were one by threes, or they are one by threes. And um, 
the goal is to get them right to the edge of the decking so that when you're looking up and you're looking at the exposed rafters uh, with the metal and stuff above them, you don't see anything else but the rafter tail, which is a, you know, the classic um, uh, craftsman style look for uh, homes. So um, anyway, normally they put, say, you know, put one uh, nail down here to get these uh, purlins down. I went ahead and did two and I tried to be right over the joist uh, so that we could try to get some additional bite in there uh, just to give the roof more uh, rigidity and, uh, you know, strength. So um, I had to measure out uh, 24 uh, inches on center for each of these. And then um, t it started raining towards the very end of this whole process. And then here just on the very far, or the close end here, um, that last section is actually more than 24 inches. It's more like 28 approximately. And uh, so anyway, it just doesn't make things line up. So I decided I was just going to go ahead and line everything up um, from the, the far west side to right before this uh, end piece that's right in the front. And uh, I cut those, those specifically the right size. Um, at the end, came back in and actually finished them. And I uh, apologize for the little black section here that you're seeing on the top left of the camera. The lens, uh, the automatic lens uh, opener thing didn't fully open, and I didn't notice it. So, anywho. So, Kelly's down there being my um, uh, my Perlin helper. Uh, handed me a lot of these things up here, and um, I thought this was going to be, you know, kind of, pretty difficult to do because I didn't know where you're going to step and step through the foil and you know, ruin the foil or whatever, but it was actually pretty easy to see where the uh, um, the, the purlins were below it and to make sure I was stepping on each of those and uh, the roof was dry, so um, everything was uh, you know pretty easy to walk on. Um, here at the very end, it starts to uh, drizzle and mist a little bit, so we just took a break and went in town, got some ice and did a few things and came back and then it was like it was a little bit too windy and got a little bit too dark. So tomorrow we're going to go and work on uh, putting the metal and stuff in place. And uh, then at some point we have to build the front eave, uh, which is going to be a certain angle and everything and adjustable so that we can maybe put our solar panels and stuff in the front. Um, and what you're seeing here is um, Kelly uh, cut me a special piece for the far end. That didn't line up, and uh, making sure that you got overlap of the purlins on the the upper purlins on the lower purlins, um, and then we've got enough screws, screws and everything in there. I mean uh, nails uh, that are going directly in um, to hold all that stuff down. So uh, it did end up starting to um, <laughs> stop. Uh, so anyway, got these done, and um, what do you think? Pretty cool, huh? So now we had some friends and stuff come over, and uh, we're checking place out. But at this point, now we've got a radiant barrier that is raised up off of the roof. So you're not going to get the emissive uh, uh, properties as much. Uh, you'll have some air gap beneath it, and air is probably one of your best insulators. So um, it's going to take the heat and deliver it right out the top into the roof, or the, what do you call it, ridge vent. And then um, we'll have another radiant barrier above it, which of course is the metal roofing. And uh, that, that should make a huge difference in uh, terms of trying to keep this cool. This type of roof uh, system, um, doing research and stuff, I found it in uh, various places in South Africa, Nigeria, places where they are trying to figure out a way to make the inside of a building cooler and not have the sun rays feel like they're just beating through the roof. So uh, anyway, I'm going to put a link to the Radiant Barrier here in just a second. And um, if you would like to get some, uh, please use the Amazon link because it will help us out. Have a great day.